Today, I'm gonna to share with you the best powder foundations that I've found for oily skin. Since maybe my mid-30s, my criteria for powder foundations has changed. If you have mature skin, this is probably a good video for you too. I feel like I used to have a real challenge with powder foundations staying on my skin or not breaking up and looking horrible as the day went on. But now there's also the challenge of them not settling into fine lines and looking too powdery and too cakey. So it, there's kind of a balance that I have to find. But first of all, I wanna welcome you here if you're new to my channel, if you are returning, Welcome to, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified of future videos that I have coming up. This isn't really a top five because I have six here. I could have done a runner up, but really two of them I use for different reasons and different occasions. So I guess I could have done a top four, but that's not really done. Two of them are loose and four of them are pressed. I'm actually gonna be taking you through my pressed powder foundation routine that I do starting from skin prep all the way to doing the rest of my face. That video is coming up shortly. I've already filmed it. I filmed it today, so be on the lookout for that. If you're interested in a video for my mineral and loose powder foundations, let me know in the comments below and I can get one of those done for you shortly as well. I'll start with the pressed powder foundation that I have used the longest in my lifetime. And that is Laura Mercier. Now she changed her formula several years ago to the Smooth Finish Foundation Powder. It used to be something else and I think it was in a square container. But this is a really great powder foundation. I actually have it in shade five for all year round and shade six for the summertime. What I like about this foundation is that it's really smooth on the skin. It's comfortable to wear. It gives a soft matte finish. It seems like it's good for all skin types. I can get sheer, medium, or full coverage from it. It evens out my skin tone, it reduces shine, it looks really good on the skin, it never looks powdery. That's actually how all of these foundations are. I'm not gonna recommend a powder foundation to you that looks cakey or powdery. And that's what my powder foundation routine is gonna focus on as well, FYI. But it just looks really good on the skin and I appreciate that, especially as I get older. I don't want anything to look too powdery or emphasize my fine lines. As the name indicates, it's a really smooth powder. So this is definitely one, it's been in my life for maybe almost 20 years. That says something right there. And you can tell with the amount that's used out of that compact that I have used that powder and that is not my first one by any means. I've gone through multiple, multiple compacts of that powder. However, I discovered the Too Faced Cocoa Powder Foundation a little bit over a year ago, I think. I have a foundation road test review on it. If you wanna check that out, it's in that playlist, but I'm also gonna link it to in the cards and down below if you wanna check that out. I love this powder foundation. I think I like it a little bit more than the Laura Mercier. It's very similar with the skin benefits and the line smoothing properties. This one seems to control oil for me a little bit better. I live in a hot, humid climate. I do have oily skin. I'm over 40. I think I said all that in the beginning. Why am I repeating it? You know, any blurring or soft focusing I can get, I'm gonna take it. It doesn't settle in fine lines. I think it has hyaluronic acid in it. I feel like everything has that in it these days. That's kind of a buzz ingredient these days, but I feel like this had it in there way before it was talked about recently. I feel like I've been talking about Too Faced a lot recently. They don't even know who I am. None of this is sponsored. None of this was given to me by Too Faced. I just feel like they have some really good standout products. And this is one of them. I'm in the shade light medium. That's not a surprise. That's what color I am in a lot of foundations. I've actually had this on in several videos. And when you guys have seen in the description box what foundation I've had on, you've been surprised that it's been a powder foundation. This is a really good powder foundation. Some of it I think has to do with the technique that I use to apply it, which isn't complicated at all. I just think a lot of people don't apply their foundation that way. This is my top used powder foundation as of today, and it is the one that I will be using in my upcoming how to apply powder foundation video. And it's what I have on my face today. Tarte Double Duty Beauty Confidence Creamy Powder Foundation in Light Neutral is the third pressed powder foundation that I'm gonna mention. Now, I don't use this one as much as I use the previous two that I talked about. I do like it a lot, though. It does feel really creamy, 
really nice. Now it's called Double Duty Beauty because it can be applied wet or dry. It's also not just makeup. It has good for you ingredients just like the other two. I'm realizing that all of these powder foundations, when I looked up little blurbs about them before I started, they all have the claim to smooth fine lines, not emphasize skin texture, have good skincare ingredients, all that kind of stuff. So that's probably why I like them, but they're also supposed to be oil absorbing. This is too, but I don't find that this one is as good with the oil control as the first two either, but it is nice. I tend to stick with this one more in the winter time and in the fall when it starts to cool off, when it cools off here, which is not very often. I feel like their shades are a little bit off with this foundation. I'm in light neutral in this foundation and I'm usually light medium in every other foundation. And if you look at the light neutral in the Tarte, with the light medium in Too Faced. I hope that's not too blown out. This is the Tarte, this is the Too Faced light medium and light. And here they are on my finger. The light is here and the light medium is here. So they're negligible. I would imagine that I swatched them in store and found that the light medium in the Tarte was too dark. I feel like that one would be really good for dry skin. I do like it wet. I feel like it gives more coverage when it's wet. It's really versatile in that aspect that you can get really, really full coverage from it. But I feel like all of these, you can get really versatile coverage from them depending on what type of brush you use, which I'll talk about really quickly while I'm here. I use typically to apply if I'm in a, a hurry, this one is usually available at my fingertips because I use it to apply my finishing powder most of the time. This is the Bare Minerals Handy Bookie Brush. I've had this one forever. You can tell it's starting to kind of splay a little bit, but that doesn't bother me. They still make this brush. I think it's still roughly the same as it was. I love Tarte's brush that they have. It's really great. It's small. It's dense with the way I apply it, which you'll see in my video coming up. It works perfectly. And I just recently discovered this brush a couple months ago from Too Faced. It's really great for travel. It's their Kabuki brush. And you can adjust this to how you want it. If you want it soft and dense, I just use this for the demo so it's kind of dirty or you can have it all the way up and use it a little fluffier. So I like that one too. The last pressed option on my list is MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in Medium Plus, and it's gonna look completely destroyed because I dropped it the other day. I almost had a heart attack because it's been used a lot, but it's not nearly close to needing replacement yet, but thankfully that's all that broke out of it. I use this as a finishing powder a ton. If you've seen my finishing powder video, my favorite finishing powders and how to use finishing powder, I use this a lot as a finishing powder. I use it on occasion as a powder foundation. I don't use it a lot, but when I want something to give kind of a luminous glow that has really sheer coverage and I just want a light coverage day, this is my pick. Sometimes I don't want light, medium, matte coverage. I do want something that has kind of a sheen to it. This is a really nice one. I kind of like it. It is pretty sheer, but that's okay. My last two are the loose mineral foundations and I really do like them both. I would have a really hard time picking which one I liked more. This one is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Airbrush Foundation. Now I said earlier that my routine for applying mineral loose foundations is different than press because you do have to apply them a little bit differently and they're not really necessarily time-saving foundations to apply, but they look really good on the skin. And I was surprised at how much coverage that I got from this foundation. This is definitely a full coverage foundation for me, and I can use it to spot conceal when I'm done after I've applied it if I need more coverage. It is 12 hour wear. They say it's waterproof. I've never actually gotten it in the water to see if it's waterproof, but it very well might be. It's got fabulous skin loving ingredients in it. If you have sensitive skin like I do, you're not gonna have an issue with this unless you have a certain allergy or sensitivity to one of the specific ingredients. 
It says on here, it gives you natural radiance and matte coverage in a weightless flake free powder. It's all you need to cover redness, unevenness and pores. It helps control oil and make your makeup last. And of course it doesn't settle into fine lines. Go figure. Every single one of those things that it says it does, it does. It covers redness, it covers up imperfections, it controls oil and it feels completely weightless. I've had this on on certain days and I have forgotten I've had makeup on. It's bizarre, especially with a powder. And I know it's a mineral powder, but still, especially if it says it's full coverage. So I adore this product. And one thing that I love about this product is the delivery system. Uh, Glossier's Wouter came out with a similar delivery system, but I feel like this one is a little bit better somehow. I don't know if it's because of how their stopper fits inside here, but I feel like it dispenses the product out a little bit better when you shake it in there without going everywhere, but I just get the right amount out. This is just a really great loose mineral foundation that feels good on the skin, it looks good on the skin, and it doesn't look or feel heavy, and I feel like that's really, really hard to come by. I'm in the shade Light Medium Neutral. I think, if I remember correctly, there were a decent amount of shades to choose from, and they were decently yellow toned, so I appreciate that. I think all of these are decently yellow toned because that pretty much eliminates foundations from my favorites if they're too pink toned because it'll look off on my skin. It just won't look right. Okay, the last foundation and the other loose mineral powder foundation that I have is the Bare Minerals Matte Foundation. It has SPF 15. I tried the original Bare Minerals Foundation and it just didn't control my oil like I needed it to. This one does. I don't think it controls my oil as well as the Tarte, but it still does a really good job. It looks good on the skin. It feels good. It's got minimal ingredients in it. The ingredient that a lot of people have issues with in the original Bare Minerals is not in this matte foundation. So if you had a sensitivity issue with the original, you may want to give this a try if you have oily combination skin. It's supposed to feel like a cream but look like a powder and give your skin this natural luminosity but yet still keep it matte and control the oil. This one does not last as long throughout the day on my skin as the Tarte does, but it still lasts a really long time. I don't think this one is quite as full coverage as the Tarte. It's a little bit lighter in coverage. I don't always need full coverage. Sometimes I want to use the Bare Minerals. Sometimes I want to use the Tarte. It's kind of an eeny, meeny, miny, mo thing. I really like them both. I am in the shade Golden Beige 13. There are tons of shades to choose from in the Bare Minerals. I know years ago they just used to have the holes in the top of the sifter. Now they have a little slider mechanism in there. I clearly haven't used it because there's powder everywhere in mine but um, I do really like this powder and I like that it is travel friendly with the sifter, just like the Tarte, but in a different way of being travel friendly. Again, a good mineral loose powder foundation. Let me know if you want me to show you my mineral loose powder foundation routine that I use for my oily combination over 40 skin. I can show you that too. My apologies if some of this video was a little bit blown out. The sun came out more than I thought it was and I wasn't really looking in the monitors trying to look straight at you guys. Those are the best powder foundations that I've tried so far for my over 40 oily combination skin. Let me know your favorites below because I'm sure there's a ton out there that I have not tried yet. I'm not saying I'll try them tomorrow, but I would certainly like to add them to my list. I've got some on my radar right now that I definitely want to try out. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you're not following me on social media, I'll put those on the screen and down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.